Hey, welcome back to Last Night I Watched. My name's Christian. I'm here with my buddies Ian, Mark, and Carlos. And we're here to talk about the second episode of the new Halo series called Unbound. Remember the tale of the rebel Jin. What a spot he put Madrigal in. He stole our hydrogen. What'd you guys think, Ian? Um, I thought what you thought. So yeah. you know, that's not really that's not ex, that's not um a good explanation. We were talking about it on the ride over here. Um, I just thought it was boring. Yeah, I thought it was really boring. Very very boring. I think I, I told so I kept falling asleep last night while watching it. But I think when I woke up, I I just told you that I thought it was boring, and I think you agreed with me. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, space politics. Yeah, I told you this too. Uh, the there's a point to what I'm about to say. So the reason why I don't, one of the reasons why I don't like the Star Wars prequels is because I feel like there's too much time in that movie is dedicated to just people sitting and talking or people walking down a corridor and talking. Yeah, and just it's just when I watch Star Wars, I want to see ships blowing shit up. I want to see people with blasters lightsaber fights i don't want to see people sitting in a room talking it's just fucking boring and i think um this was about 50 minutes of that and yeah you know i had to rewatch it this morning because i kept falling asleep last night and um yeah i'm like kind of like okay how much time is left you know I, I with my paramount plus subscription i have i have commercials so i'm like i'll go to commercial i can go you know check my email or something <laughs> and then okay back and I'm like, okay, it's, um, yeah, just kind of, it was just kind of boring. There wasn't even a fight, I think. Was there any action in this episode? There was an execution. Oh, where he's, yeah. um, they had the bags over their heads. Yeah. That, yeah. okay, that was probably the only thing where I was like, oh, nice. Which I like that actor. Yeah, yeah. I forget his name. I think he's in Casino Royale, the James Bond movie, or am, am I, I might be thinking of somebody else. You might be thinking of, uh, Mickelson. Yeah. Who's this guy? What else has he been in? I don't know. I think he was in Dark Knight Rises. Right. Okay, we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a good actor. But uh, it was just, yeah, just kind of boring. At least the first episode had that scene in the beginning where the elites are fighting the clan of people. This just, I don't know. Almost no action. No. And yeah. that's what I want from, when I think of Halo, I think of, you know, Spark... Master Chief with his assault rifle shooting grunts, shooting the flo you know, shooting elites, warthogs driving around, pelicans coming in and you know blowing shit up. I don't think of people just sitting around talking. It's just a little too expository for my liking for something like this. If ever something like Pulp Fiction or Goodfellas, where that's the point of the witty dialogue, is gripping enough for you to keep you interested and uh, revealing of how the characters are, that's great. But with something like this, it just it just leaves me kind of just, uh, you know, moving my mouse cursor to see how much time's left. So, <laughs> yeah, that's all I got to say. What about you, Mark? Um, yeah, it, it was a little slow. I was uh, like Ian, you know, I paused it a couple of times to see how much time was left. Um, here, you know, here's here's, a, you know, and I and I talk with my my youngest son at length about this. You got to figure that these the, the Star Wars, this the reason that they are the way they are is because they have to they have to appeal to everybody that's watching it and there's going to be people out there myself included where i'm going to need a little bit of filler now it depend it, it depends on how well they do that filler you know evident you know obviously they're not doing that great of a job with it with this show so uh, you know i don't i don't necessarily ding it for that they could have maybe had a little bit less fill and a little more action, you know, just kind of try to keep it even. Uh, I, I like the way that the ship moves through space. I think yeah, that's a pretty cool. That was cool. It had like a overshield. It had like a purple overshield or something, right? Kind of on it. That was weird. I didn't know what that was. I, it's I don't know. I maybe like signifying that it's that's like their version of hyperspace, maybe or something. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. that was kind of cool though. I'll give you that. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, you know, like um. In a Star Trek, you know, you can get knocked out of warp. Right. And I don't think, 
you know, it's almost like they're in a corridor with this, you know, and yeah, it would be a lot harder to follow them. And, right. And that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, I mean, unlike you two, I, I mean, I, you know, probably won't go home and watch it again, but I, you know, I thought it was okay. It's just kind of an extension, a little bit of that, that first, uh, episode crap that you got to go through. We're introducing everything in. It's, it's just a continuation of that. Um, his, uh, buddy that he let go during their training or maturization or whatever it is. Um, I really, really like that actor. I'm glad he finally made an appearance and, uh, he was a lot nicer to him. I think than I would have been, you know, losing my arm and only getting five minutes to get out of the compound. I mean, right. You know, that, that would kind of suck. Right. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I was, I was okay with it. A little tweak here and there, and it, it would have been a lot more enjoyable. Yes. So. Okay. How about you, Carlos? Uh, I think that I like this episode. Um, nice. yeah. We know that this isn't canon to the video games. Right. So we do need a little bit of world building, so we're kind of getting set up, of course. With these TV shows, we al- we always have to have a new setup for... Um, for every new world that we're introduced to or universe in this matter because we're going all over the place we're going to high charity in this episode we're going to i think a little bit of reach a little bit of magical and then all of a sudden we're in a mining colony right in the middle of asteroids which what you what you think about the uh the mining colony that was neat um yeah. cool concept how they have like the trams and the you know um how the thing was like flown out of like the uh hole that they yeah. were in on it and then it like latches onto the wire. I thought that was neat. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. interesting. I, I liked it. Some of the effects on the rail part of it, like they're zooming down the asteroid uh, yeah. tracks, and and then they look inside the cockpit, and everybody's just like standing still and chilling out, <laughs> like it was totally natural. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's funny. <laughs> I didn't even think that. That's funny. <clears throat> I did like his um his buddy. Uh, I think he's played by Bokeem Woodbine. Yeah, and he plays that's what you, that, Spartan Soren. That's who you're talking about, right, Mark? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That he's because I I before we recorded, he, I like that actor a lot. And Mark, I think he said the same thing. He's a really good actor. Yeah, it's good to see him in here. Yeah, he was doing okay with his role. Um, yeah, he's fine. His wife though is a little interesting. I think when we were watching, I was like, "This chick looks she's like she's out of a 1940s movie or something." Yeah, yeah, it was, felt really out of place. Her, yeah, uh, outfit. It did. I mean, actress is fine. I don't. I actually looked her up. I think she's Irish. I don't. I've never seen her in anything else. Yeah. Um. I forget her name, but yeah, it was kind of like a little like I uh, didn't really expect this in Halo, <laughs> but you know, it it didn't piss me off. I I think right. we were we were saying last week that um mm-hmm. the first episode felt a lot like Star Wars. Yeah. And this episode as well felt a lot like Star Wars. I think you said that last night, Christian. Right. Yeah, when yeah. they're walking through the, uh, I guess it's sort of, is that when they're in the money colony, when he finds the dude with the arm? The all bad arm, up? yeah. Uh, Soren, Spartan Soren. <clears throat> right. That's his name. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. kind of okay. runs the place. Yeah. So, kind of that feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's in charge over there. I almost get, like, um, Lando Calrissian vibes, because he runs Cloud City. Yeah, definitely. You yeah, it's, yeah. You got the Falcon that's going through the asteroid. Yeah, field. right. Yeah, and that yeah. too. And that too, yeah. yeah. But, Star um, Wars references. Yeah, that whole like hallway or corridor when Chief and uh, Quan Ha are walking through it in the asteroid colony, it looks like something straight out of Star Wars. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. I immediately thought of that like right away. Yeah. So. Um, which, I don't know if that's a good thing, a bad thing. It's fine with me. It looked, it looked good. It looked like yeah. a real place in a way. Yeah, it's cool. Um, it's just the, uh, I don't know, I, I need more. Yeah, see, that's what I'm. That's what I keep saying after these episodes. Is give me a little bit more. I need yeah. a little bit more of the plot. A little, what's what's even going on here? I know they're trying to set it up as like a mystery. Like, what's this ancient artifact? Um, but yeah, and they're setting up Cortana too. I yeah. think it looks like. I guess Cortana is like a physical being of sorts. A clone. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like a replicant from Blade Runner or something. Like. Yeah, I was confused about that. Yeah, and yeah. they're setting her up. So, we'll see where that goes. So right. What'd you What'd you think of the show? I I mean, you know, we've all kind of said stuff, but what did you think? Yeah. Overall, um, I I thought a lot of it was pretty boring, honestly. Like I didn't really. I don't know. It. 
like I said, like I need to see more. I'd like to see more out of it. And I understand that they're trying to do like the whole world building thing. And that's totally understandable. And it's the first like official, official live action thing that we've gotten in regards to the Halo franchise. So they have that to deal with, you know, with, as far as criticisms go um, with the whole boring thing being an issue. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, like, the characters are not super interesting to me so far. Um, I don't know when they're going to show Cortana. Um, I guess they're just... Maybe next episode. Yeah, it could be. It sounds like they might be doing that for the next one. But, um, yeah, just kind of boring, uh... Like Ian said, I mean, when I watch Halo, I want to see, you know, ships being blown up and, you know, Master Chief going around with a pistol or an assault rifle and just messing up all the elites and grunts and jackals and brutes and whatnot. So, I don't know. I'd like to see more of it. I hope we get more, and I would expect, you know, it being a Halo show that he's going to be doing more of that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. It's kind of kind of boring. One, so far. one thing um, watching it this morning was I almost got kind of this idea that this is Paramount Plus's sci-fi show and it just so happens to have Halo branded on it. Because hmm. I think yeah. if you take away the Halo name, this is just another run-of-the-mill sci-fi streaming show right. almost yeah. so far. Aside from the battle at the beginning of the first episode, everything else is just... You could take away the Halo name, maybe change his armor up a little bit. I like it could be streaming on Netflix, and it could be called something else. I can't think of a name. Star yeah. Trek. Well, something. I think that name's already been taken, but yeah. you know, um, yeah. That's what I I got that in my head. I'm like, yeah, you know, if you take away all that stuff, it's just another kind of just random sci-fi show that you would find on a streaming service but at the same time you know there's still pro i'm hoping there's still more to be shown and more to be um kind of explained what were the what was up with those people in the cages yeah why like were they the, in cages the crazy dude yeah who's like crazy for some reason does he is he the one who explains them about halo they don't uh, call it halo but they say it's like a ring that can destroy stuff uh i don't I'm not sure if it was him. I think I think it was him. Yeah, it was. I think so. That was the okay. best part for me. Was, yeah. Um, I think Chief grabs him and he pushes him against the wall. And right. He's warning him that it's gonna be a some sort of a weapon. Right. Yeah. And then all of a uh, sudden, as he's describing the ring that the Covenant are looking for, you can hear the theme song playing in the background. Oh, oh I didn't even notice that. I got That's the cool. chills. Okay. Nice. <laughs> it was cool. Because because so far in the show we haven't really had that big um, oh right oh, yeah. Oh, Right. And I think they're saving it for when we finally do see the ring and okay. then that theme song's gonna hit. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Because so far the uh, music's just been pretty generic, like yeah. spacey right. theme songs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sci fi type stuff. Yeah. There's a, a part, I noticed it in this episode toward the end. Um, they played it when he was, when he had left um, Quan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was going to his ship. It sounded a lot like the uh, Batman theme song from uh, Christian Bale's Batman. Okay. Oh, okay. It did sound pretty familiar. Yeah, yeah I got that. Yeah, I got okay. that. I can, yeah, I can kind of see what you're getting at. So did I get it right that there's more than one of these things? Yes, in the game. These games. artifacts. Are, are you talking about the... In, in the movie, I got the... That, so do they get a bunch of these artifacts and that creates the ring? We've never that, seen these uh, artifacts before. That's why it's yeah, kind of like making yeah. me like wonder, okay, what was this artifact about? Give me right. some more info. Yeah. Um, and the Very... fact that John is the only one who could touch it and sees the visions or sees his past, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's kind of a vague explanation of it so far. So mm -hmm. Everybody's still kind of wondering. There's right. still mystery behind this artifact thing right and the crazy dude in the cell he says you got to destroy it before the covenant can use it to find the weapon the ring 
So I don't know. We'll yeah. s- I guess that's why John turned himself in at the very right. end. He's yeah. like, I need some help. <laughs> I need the army. <laughs> right. Yeah, the UNSC is what they're called, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Well, since they don't necessarily trust him, so they're probably not going to send him out on missions, is he going to stop taking that pill that's supposed to shut off his emotions and allow him to do what he does? I don't think we've really seen mm. him take any pills because I, I bet you it's already, like, injected. Cause well, I know Brokeem that... told him about it. Really? Yeah. He says, you know, why do you think you take that whatever pill that's in your backpack? Wow. You know, and he's like, you know, well, to make me fight better and all that kind of stuff. He goes, no, it's to shut down your emotions. Mm. I just totally missed that. Yeah, I think I did too. So I wonder yeah. if he's going to remember this while he's there, or does he need to take it while he's there, and maybe he'll start questioning why he needs to take it if he's not out in the field. Oh, shit. You know, that'd be cool. Speaking of pills, one thing I thought that was interesting, they're like huffing nitrous oxide. I thought that was kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, it's space weed. Yeah, <laughs> fucking whatever Dennis Hoff- Hopper was huffing in a de- blue velvet. Like, I, I forget what they're like. It's clarity. She's like, oh, no, I've had enough clarity Yeah. for one day. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, the, uh, with the 1940s yeah. actress. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, with as far as, like, the filler goes and... Um, how uh boring it might seem i mean you do have to approach this kind of a thing to a broader audience than just you know the fans of the games yeah that's what mark was getting at and i get it so yeah hopefully it picks up in in that regard but uh my only argument against that is is even if i you know if i had to remove myself it's it's you know impossible to wipe my memory of halo but if i were to try and place myself in say mark's position i've never played the games or anything i'd still be fucking bored really but that's just that's just my view and you know again i can't say that for certain because i can't erase all my memory of halo and whatnot but i would probably be really fucking bored maybe even more so than i am now (laughs) because at least i have the connection that it's halo and that's what's keeping me interested but again that's that's just me i see where you're coming from <clears throat> and you talked about, you talked about Cloud City. I mean, this this mirrors Cloud City big time, mm. you know. And I I kind of just chalk it up to that, you know. He needed help. He knew the guy. Stopped. Yeah. Bad guy showed up, or in this case, you know, the good guy showed up to bring him back. Right. You know, I just I I just kind of chalk it up to to that. He okay. needed help, and you know, he couldn't get what he needed there. Or he could. By dropping off Kawan and uh, said, okay, gotcha. bring me home. So, you know, but you're, I mean, I, I, I 100% agree that they need to crank up the action and crank back the the filler a little bit, yeah. definitely. And maybe they can do that now because they kind of got it set now, yeah. I think, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So When uh, he leaves Kwan behind, I felt like, they were expecting you to feel like kind of, I don't know, disappointed or sad or something like that. And I didn't really get that. I was just like, Oh, he's leaving her behind. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. I've never had a lot of feelings for Quan. Yeah. I, they, I don't care. Yeah. Sayonara baby. <laughs> and I think that's cause John's such a mythical being too. He's like the best of the best. Like why be weighed down by like little rebel soldier girl? Yeah. Like, maybe that's why we didn't really feel anything with Cortana you know well they haven't met yet but say maybe in season 2 or something he has to leave her behind in some situation and you know he's sad about that that's understandable you know more than a random rebel chick yeah so he pretty much did his job yeah. grabbed her put her someplace safe and be done exactly she yeah. just really didn't have she didn't have enough going for her as a character for me to give a shit what he did with her, kind of. Yeah. Well. She's, I don't think she's done. No. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. She's yeah. going to want to go back to Madrigal and Probably, take that yeah. guy out. Yeah. And you think they're going to pull Brokeem into this? and Ooh. That'd be cool, too. Yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. It's <clears> like, oh, man, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got to do that. 
So this is mm-hmm. episode two out of nine. I think they're doing this season. I heard. Oh, they're doing. Nine. Yeah, I looked it up after we recorded the Number last nine? episode. I was like, I don't know how many. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah it, so nine. it is nine. Yeah. What What would you uh, rate this episode out of five, Christian? Probably two point five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What about what about you, Ian? Same thing, two point five. I can't give it a passing grade. It was just too boring. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> if it had an action sequence in it, I'd give it a three, or maybe even more if it was that good of an action sequence. But it was just too, too much expo- like uh, exposition spouting. Not enough. It, um, you were saying like all you know, you want not a lot of uh, filler, more more uh, action. Is that what you said? You said something like that, right? Something about a lot of filler. Well, I, I, I think that they should even it out. Oh, yeah, okay. It, yeah. I completely I mean, agree. For, for us normal normies, mm-hmm. you know, that know nothing about this, right. I, mean, I need some filler. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's understandable, but I, I don't want a whole episode of it. Right, yeah. That's my gripe. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just like, what the God? It's, um, yeah, I want more killer, less filler. So hopefully that'll happen in episode three. So. But I mean, you gotta, you know, think about it. You know, it's it. This is, this is taking you on a path away from the video games to a certain extent. So mm-hmm. this filler could do you some good. It you could know, too. It could. It could pay off. But as of right now, it's it's you know I, we only have what we have to work with. So right. yeah, I'm gonna have to agree or not agree. I'm gonna have to say the same thing as Christian and say two point five. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do three. Mark gives it a three. Yeah, a week three. <laughs> All right. Nice. How about you? Me, I would give it a same score as last round at three point five. Okay. We mm-hmm. got a little bit more of the story to figure out what's going on. Um, some new characters and actors are introduced that I liked. Um, the mining sequence was probably the weakest part for me. Um, yeah. like effect wise, like the CGI of it skidding down was interesting. But then going back to um, the guy who's executing people on Madrigal and he wants to like work with the UNSC um, rather than Quan Ha's father who was like a rebel against the UNSC. I kind of like where we're going with that where he's like, oh man, we could be something. We could be big. Uh, We could be the biggest outer rim planet now if we start flowing uh, fuel or whatever resources through the colonies. Um, So that was kind of interesting I, I guess we didn't really talk about that but it's kind of setting up for some sort of um i don't know i'm trying to relate it to like uh real life history maybe like uh i don't want to say like iran oil or something or <laughs> or something in like the east like china yeah, or something i right. don't know but no, I, I, I think I, they're I trying to get some of that in there yeah too. I, yeah I, I can just kind of see that yeah, yeah. So we'll see where that goes um i'm excited to see more of those new characters of course like soren and and we got to see a little bit more of a silver team too. They're all trying to track down John, right? His Spartan buddies. Good to see them. Um, yeah, three point five up for me. All right. Thank you for watching, and we will be back for episode three. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yes. Later, everybody.